like Morning Stars, who's already eyeing up this more uh, more standardized composition that we see, obviously, with Malzasa looking to go onto that Winston. And we actually have KSP no in the roster rather than Hardest, who's absent from this map. I would see, oh, I hope to see Askov switch over to the, to the Mercy. But they're gonna run with this. There we go. There's the mercy coming out. You absolutely need that to get the get zeal onto the point with the fire, and then basically keep Kenzie in motion afterwards whilst Ed, the enemy team is on the retake. But it's up to Morning Stars to take this one quickly in the first place. But already Dragon Eddie, demacked. So that's a lot less pressure off Zeal's back now. Demacked by that super fluke coming in there with the wrecking ball, holding this high ground down for Eternal Academy. And they have point control. They force Morning Stars off to the side. They're going to try and lock down Dragon Eddie. He's isolated. You're going to go down. You can't fight against wrecking ball if you're locked in a corridor with him. Oh. Zeal's able to find the back line quite easily. You've got yourself KSP up on the high ground. The point control ultimately going over to Eternal Academy. Yeah, this is not what I expected here. It's a great use of this composition. Um, I would have preferred to see Askoff go back there and help. Kenzie out a little bit earlier. Zeal was relatively uncontested about the diva in the air. So Kenzie, there could have been a lot more attention paid to him, basically. And he might have even had Bob available by this time. But now Morning Stars are making some switches up. you got the Mora out there to sustain through the heavy burst damage that is coming out of Eternal Academy. And you also have Leaf on the Sombra to prevent all that mobility that they're giving so freely to Super Pluke at the moment. Splitting up a lot as well, not sticking together. Leaf already finding Trispear, exactly what he needs to do with that hack and a barrage straight into the bubble and 600 HP gets burned away quite Go easily. On, then. As does Malzasa, Zeal giving him the one, two. A couple of digs as he flies around the map, takes back control of this point. Dredro, see you later, friend, though. This point is definitely Eternal Academies. Yeah, I'm very happy with what I've been seeing from Zeal so far. I like the switch from Kenzie as well as um, can kind of avoid a lot of the burst damage is coming out from Malzasa and Leaf on the engage. So this means Kenzie can be a bit more of a pain in the back and also allow Zeal to rain down a lot more damage. But it's up to Super Pluke to stay out of the way for the time being. And what a spot to be doing just that. Yeah, he's balancing on a knife said We'll drop the power drive into the middle of the team. But it was all show. There was nothing else there as Malzasa already picks up Tri-Spear. Dragon has been grounded by a hack. But Zeal's going to take out Leaf. Make sure they get rid of him. EMP for Chow picks up the Mega that he's hacked. Pluk with the Mines takes out Exorath. We did get that Coalescence off, but he's going to go down after with Dragon. Then he will get a return kill. But this is looking <laughs> like sheer dominance coming out from Eternal Academy as the environmental kill comes in for Zeal. Yeah, Zeal, like I said, playing extremely well. Last fight already as well as Morningstar. They have to get back to point. This is not how I saw this being played out. I'm not even sure they can touch. It's really going to be down to Dragon Eddie or Leaf to touch this one. We're going to have to get on there. They are able to contest the overtime here. 99% in favor of Eternal Academy. And Morningstars have control of the high ground, but you want to be capping the point. You don't want to be hiding from above the barrage committed by Zeal. Not going to find anyone. Kenzie picks off Malzasa, who's moved on to the Tracer. Going to be getting down on Big the low ground, making sure that he's just cleaning up any of them. And the EMP comes in. Morningstars grounded, unable to contest this any further. Leaf will return a kill onto Chow. Dragon Eddie without a mech is easy. You're throwing the EMP. You pretty much throw the kitchen sink at him at this point. Overtime ticks down. Eternal Academy. Take out Gardens. 100 to 0. And you know what, Trip? Swoosh does want to get Kenzie on that Tracer there. Does want to give them a little bit of that diversity. And I love this. They're playing to the advantages of Eternal Academy, which we were discussing earlier. He's not going to just keep them on free free, keep them rigid like that. And coming over to City Center, it's such a boon for Eternal Academy here because it's another map that enables them to play this type of uh, composition. We are going to have a quick pause right now. Um, not sure what's happening, but we'll get the game back on as soon as we can. So obviously, Oasis is a map that allows you to have these uh, less tank-heavy compositions at times. And that is playing into the advantage of Eternal Academy at the moment. But I want to see what happens when they are forced into a situation where they have to play traditional goats. That's the big question mark with it this is, roster yeah. for me. So while it's good that they're performing well on Eternal Academy and taking it off to this opposing team and Morning Stars, it is much better than expected, shall we say, capping that 100% to zero matchup. But then... When we get onto other maps like your Eichenwalder, where you will have to use those tank heavy compositions at some point, you can end up with hitting a roadblock potentially. Yeah, uh, but just really quickly, uh, whilst we do have time to talk about um, Gardens there, I really do want to congratulate Eternal Academy on their target prioritization. Um, there was a lot of times where as soon as Leaf comes out of stealth, you know, someone's there to take him out, the quick burst damage come out from the barrage there, removes him, which 
not only removes the hack potential, but it allows Superplug to be a lot more mobile without risking running into a hack early on. So it's actually incredible, and, and it makes it basically makes you panic if you're on Morning Stars because now you don't have that ability to shut down Super Pluke early and focus on either the Ash or the Fire in the Sky or the Tracer later on. Um, so really, really well played to them. I think that is actually to their benefit the whole time because I do think the Morning Stars, they switched to the correct comp there to actually fix the issues that they had when they were on the free free. And I think I'm going to get added quite a bit because I did promise no more delays and we just had a brief delay. But <laughs> thankfully, as I say that, we're jumping into the map. <laughs> don't worry about it. Forget about it. Let's get into this matchup. City Center... Already seen a change up of composition, Eternal Academy. We might have heard my question marks here. This is looking pretty standard. Goats to me blank on the side of Morning Stars. Now we're flexing onto some DPS. You got a leaf on the Hanzo, KSP on that Ash. Yeah, Mercy is a great hero because she's quite self-sufficient, but I don't think is this is the comp you want to be running into Eternal Academy unless you can take advantage of this Fabergé egg in the middle. The middle really take advantage of the high ground. And so far, KSP, he's got to pop off up here. He's going to throw the Dynamite into the background. Does hit multiple members, but Eternal Academy, they're just kiting around trying to avoid this sight line. And yeah. when you give up central control to Leaf as well as Malzasa, they can still get the damage in no matter which angle you take around there. And KSP is going to be on this high ground and limitless where the Ray can actually move without taking this free damage. Point control, seeming like it's going over to Eternal Academy for the time being. Uh, Morningstar still able to contest it. No kills coming in for them yet. We're just waiting for something to give. And Chow's going to contest, but he's punished mm. heavily for it. He's about to lose that med, but he gets in with a sliver of HP back nice. in cover. Now the healing has to come out of support from Eternal Academy to bring them back into it. Oh, ooh, 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 spicy. Going down very low there. And Superplute taking a few dinks to the head. The Orb Discord on top of him as well. Going to send Bob in. This could open things up. There's a nice little sleep dart or knockback into Bob. We're knocking onto the floor. TNT again from KSP. There's an isolated try. It's been a first kill. This is Morningstar. Opening the back up, Leaf again onto Super Pluke. This is definitely going to be Morning Stars getting the first take. Yeah, that goes down. I think it was actually smart from Eternal Academy. I can see what they were trying to do there because they were pushing their big targets into the front line like Chow and you throw Super Pluke out there. And that's mainly so that you can build up supportive ultimates on your side and then hopefully engage with them. It doesn't really work out in their favor just because. Leaf and KSP are damn good at what they do. There's a lot of damage going through. I don't think even Chow expected the amount of damage that came out there as he slid down the wall like, I need healing now, guys. <laughs> Spamming it. I need healing. Medic. <laughs> you also had like Leaf and KSP up on that high ground. And it was basically like they were clay pigeon shooting. They were launched <laughs> up in the air and just shattered. And they're doing it all over again. Eternal Academy have to cower behind Super Pluke's shield and go into full retreat because they've already lost Askoff, who went down with that sound barrier and in that last engagement, Zeal popped the rally, so they're missing one ultimate. And if you look at Morning Stars, they're starting to build up a buffet of their own. Yeah, and it's great to see KSP in the roster as well as, and I think they absolutely expected what was coming out from Eternal Academy here, because as you can see, we don't have Hardest. It looks like Morning Stars weren't planning to run the Zarya mm -hmm. in the first place. Yeah, you do have a... Um we, we, spent, we associate KSP with more of these DPS flavored heroes than we do with Hardest. He was born it's capable of playing up. them. Gonna be putting Bob onto the point. They have to move around. It's all about isolating those sight lines. Now, look at this. You put Bob there and you can leave Ash on the high ground. You're able to force them out into someone's line of sight. Dragon Eddie with it's that so self destruct good. will take out Chow. KSP obviously still doing damage from the high ground. Askoff hops away, gets away with a sliver of HP. 70% for Morning Stars. This could be a 100 to 0 map again, but this time flipped over to the Italian roster. Yeah, it's the Morning Stars who are coming up big here. And it's a really good bob, in my opinion, because Morning Stars have identified that that's the cover that Eternal Academy have been practicing. Once you put the bob there, they're forced into an unfair position. They've got to make some decisions there. That's when mistakes start to happen. Morning Stars, however, they've got a big bank of ultimates here. Valkyrie is ready to be popped at a moment's notice, as well as a Dragon Eddie's Dragons. And KSP's already opened it up onto Trisphere. Kenzie's on the high ground trying to harass them. Leaf just picks off Fluke. They've already lost two members. Eternal Academy trying to get into this one. And KSP's just going to change the high ground. Kazeel being popped out. 86%. He's close to the EMP. Oh, oh what a prediction from KSP. He knew exactly where the dash was coming he in. Ain't coming for us, the TNT and preemptively gets himself there. Dragon Strike will clear out the point. Zeal manages to get the EMP off, but no one's around to capitalize. Morning Stars gone back with 100% to zero map cap. And that is so weird. Only 200% over two maps, and it's one to one. Uh, we're going to have a quick pause again. 
Uh, it would look like Zeal has DC'd. Um, so back to us. Uh, and really now, the chat should be getting pretty lively. Adding him, specifically. Well, you can add me at the chat, but I'm not going to be reading it during the match. I've actually no, got a job to no, do, funnily enough. No. It's like you, you've got a clone, clone reading Twitch chat for you at the same time. Yeah, I'm not going to have some. I'm going to have some <laughs> ghost Twitch chatting for me, unfortunately. But it's really impressive <laughs> to see that great composition coming out from Morning Stars. Like I said, Bob, placement, fantastic. Forcing them around from the cover. That I don't think it's necessarily just... Um, just Eternal Academy that were using that cover. In fact, if you watch a lot of teams, they love to kite around that central pillar. Yeah, and British Hurricane in particular. Exactly. And if you force them out from that hidey hole, you said they've got to make a choice. Do you want to be shot by Bob or do you want to be <laughs> shot by Ash? It's one yeah. of the two is happening. All Leaf. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a few All options for you. Well, yeah, you can, you've got like a little drop down menu. It's like, which one do I select here? I can either have Leaf, KSP, Oh, Bob. <laughs> and if you get into the air, like we saw Chow doing, then it's a la carte. Everything is open yeah. for you. <laughs> As a, a, wide, a wide variety. It's just, just it depending how hungry you are, really. For, for death, I guess? <laughs> I don't think anyone really hankers for that at all. No. But uh, going to move on to university, where people are hankering for knowledge. And we're going to learn more about Eternal Academy as they free. roll out with the traditional composition. Now, this is the mirror match I wanted to see. And this is where we really get a real test of how this roster will shape up in the most popular composition currently in Overwatch. Indeed, both Lucios. Bowing for control there, but it will be Malzasa going down first. And this is Eternal Academy putting the best foot forward, able to take out Leaf and Malzasa. So the shield combo just being removed from Morning Stars in Eternal Academy, happy to push them back to the spawn room. The stragglers, they couldn't get back there. They're going to have to take the shortcut, which is jumping off the edge of the map. Yeah, Morning Stars must have known that they would have definitely had a potential to play as map. So you, you, you got to know that KSP will have a decent Zarya on hand, but it's not hardest. Um, but still, I think Morning Stars can definitely run with this. Now it's up for them to go for the retake, and Eternal Academy are holding a bit too far forward for my liking. Well, they're going to have to fall back now. You can see the Zuplu going down a little bit low. Needs a lot of attention to keep him up. Uh, nice level of charge there for Kenzie. He wants to force this to go through the choke. Rally being popped, getting closer and closer to the grab. Malzasa stunned up, but he Please wants to go his. down. Nice maintenance by Morning Stars. Going to have to pop the Transcendent to make it happen. Shatter. Nice block. Planted down. Beautiful block. And Dredro's dancing around. KSP takes out Zeal. Then they're going to be dropping down the Graviton Surge. Lock Morning Stars together. Malzasa has been picked off by Blue. Finds his second kill of the fight. They want to try and take back control of this point and get it up to 50%. Try Spear taking him out. Extra and we're going to keep on going. And they're going to hit that 50%. Yeah, and climbing still. 0% on the side of Morning Stars. They've got to make it back to the point. The grab there towards the end wasn't really favorable, but you did force the trans out of Tri Spear. Maybe a bit of panic there. I do think that Tunnel Academy had that fight in the bag. I don't think the transcendents need to be invested, but now it does open it up for the Shatter. Well, Shatter's going to be planting straight into his shield. Up nice. over the top and Dragon Eddie finds two. Opening it up for Morning Stars. They want to press into this one. Two for one trade. Sound barrier used aggressively. Kenzie, but let's take that right click. A little bit of indecision from KSP, but Dream will get the D-Mech onto Chow, take out the Mini Diva, Plouf the nice late, can't get back to the team. KSP is there to pick up the Ragdoll as Kenzie will also fall. Ascot buys more time to try and get it up into the 90s, but it's going to be 85 when the flip comes in. And it's slow, but assured, because as you can see, Malzasa is on 15%, so he's not swinging at all. He's giving all the energy over to KSP here, who's now on 85%, 89 now, puts him in a great position to work with this next fight. Go for that counter grab or grab early. Transcendence available for no Exo No support Rav. ultimate's available if either. the grab comes out from Kenzie, so they will have the option to defend. Shadow being planted down. No one's going to be feeling that one as it's nicely blocked out by Mizasa, this veteran tank player coming in very consistent for Morning Stars as he had done in the previous season. Holding around the corner, but they've got plenty of time to play with. Eternal Academy have to win one fight and then hold the Morning Stars a little bit further to go. Both Brigitte is going to knock themselves down. Dredro is happy to pick off Super Plouk. And then a little bit of deterrence coming in from Askoft as Eternal Academy going to full retreat. Dredro again with the double kill. Getting a melee onto Zeal to make it good. And Leaf looking to return the favor. Take out Askoft as well. Morning Stars in control at this point, and they're climbing ever closer to Eternal Academy's score. Yeah, winning that fight just off the back with a great block into the rally means you get premium on this next fight. You've got the rally armor as well as because the fight was so convincing. And Eternal Academy, they're in a little bit of an ultimate hole right now. 62% of climbing. This is potentially last fight now, Trip. You got the classic, you got the big bang combination. Kenzie with the Graviton Surge. Chow, self-destruct could be an option. 
Sound barrier to kick things off. Stunned up Leaf. Ravka coming out. Chow's found the Brigitte. Want to do something with this shield? Nice boot will give Chow the second kill with that self right and now. send Malzasa right down the well. They're going to get the flip, but they need to regroup fast because we're getting into the danger zone. Yeah, they had to disengage there. KSP absolutely had to hold on to the energy. They need that advantage coming in this next fight whilst Eternal Academy have the defender's advantage. 70% on Zeal, so they have that big, big momentum ultimate with the rally coming into this one. Hopefully KSP his energy will be enough. Leaf. Chow taking out Leaf again. Malzasa will get the flame strike kill onto Super Plume, taking out his opposite Rama. Nice beat. The HP bars were low, but the sound barrier will give it all the compensation it needs for Malzasa to truck on forward with the rest of Morning Stars at the edge of the feet. They flip it back around. We could only see one more fight. Both Zarya's very close towards that Graviton. Neither side has a transcendence or a sound barrier as of yet, so Axraf will be looking to get that one before this next fight starts. But Zeal will be coming into this one with the rally as well as but Super Blue. He has to hit one of these shatters. So far, he has been negated a lot of times. Oh, Nick Close, wall control, nice and early, going over to Askov, getting behind, trying to push these Ryan into unfavorable so low. Malzasa going down low, and Kenzie's there to pick him up. Shadow committed, it will keep KSP out of the fight after he puts his Graviton Surge in. Man advantage going over to Eternal Academy. They have positional they control, this. but they don't have the point just yet. Need to get the flip in. Over Askov. Askov going for the Go double on. frag and taking out KSP. Have to hide away from the self-destruct. Get yourself rid of that Dredro. He has the Orb of Harmony, but he he doesn't have a chance of maintaining the fight. Hello, Contenders Europe Eternal Academy is here to rumble. It's a big opening for them as well as taking the first control map there where Technically, really, Morningstar's had advantage. They had a lot more DPS on the side there who were quite competent. You had KSP as well as we've seen how good this guy is before. This was incredible. This was really incredible. It's nice to see that Tunnel Academy definitely have a good grasp of this free free after Swoosh has come in, um, after they've been coaching Gigante. Um, but it's a good start. And potentially this is might be a free one. You never know. They must have got sent an early copy of the script, grabbed it, teared it up, thrown it to, into the wind. Paris Eternal Academy pick up their first map for win and they start off the series with a bang. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to bring Eichenwald.
Welcome back to our Watch Contenders Europe Eternal Academy. They're not here to have a little not bit of a all. not to have a goof, not to have a gaff. They're here no. to win. Taking away the first map from Samsung Morning Stars and gonna get that 1-0 victory so far. But we're moving in to Iconvalda as our second map of the day. Not day, of the series. What am the I doing? Series. I'm all over the place blank. Yeah, so what would this be? Be the um the the sixth map of the day, I think. Let's just keep it with the second map of the series. Let's yeah, not yeah. I'm not gonna confuse myself because I do get confused easily at times. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Um but yeah, we're going to Icon Vault now. And this is a map where we have previously seen teams um setting up in unconventional ways, and then with Giganti, you see them setting up just behind the broken tank as well as which seems to be the optimal positioning, mm -hmm. but it, it's taking corners that you like the idea of. Uh, and if we can take Swoosh being on the team by, by any point, then you might actually see that once again and similar setups being involved. There it is. The man we hyped up so much at the beginning of the series. Hardest, subbing in for KSP, coming into the Morning Stars roster. So I think really we had KSP in there for the DPS composition yeah. that Morning Stars wanted to enable on Oasis. But I don't think you get the same results on Icon Varda, So you put Hardest on there on the Zarya and going to see how he ch how he measures up against Kenzie. Yeah, well, uh, we'll they'll be both up against the wall with the, with the rulers out. So we'll, we'll see how it goes with now. With the rulers out. Yeah, yeah you know, you know, you, you strike your little height on the, on the... You never did that? No. Because right. I, I stopped growing when I was 13 years that old. That is true. I, I, was, <laughs> I, I, I was just getting taller and taller. It's like, we're running out of wall, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't even get past like the little etchings of cats <laughs> like the door handle. <laughs> we'll just we'll just not bother some. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're fine. That's what you are. <laughs> Eternal Academy versus Morning Stars, map number two. Eternal Academy with the 1-0 lead after picking up Oasis. And Morning Stars will be on the offense first. Only difference, Eternal Academy, try spear on the Ana try and shut down Morning Stars. So really gonna go for some bio grenades through the rotations, and there are some long rotations as you come onto point on Icon Vault, but if they don't get that bio grenade, things are starting to get hairy very quickly. Everyone's being thrown around like pinballs blank. I don't know what to make of it. Chow's gonna take out Leaf to begin with, so hard is back goes. on the map. Ask off, none of your shenanigans today, my friend. See you back in the spawn room. Leaf will join the fight a lot quicker than Askov can. Maybe not actually. It is a Lu show after all. We can just amp it up and we'll ride ourselves <laughs> back to the point. Morning Stars, not too deterred. Still holding this forward position as uh, Nazasa and Pluga are going to clash out again. Hardest isolates himself by going very aggressive, but can peel back in time to stay alive. They're on the point, but they can't clear off and start making progress until they get rid of Eternal Academy. Super Pluk with that flame strike finds out Dream so yet mate. again. You kind of, you build up the fire and then you put a blanket over the top and suffocate it and you have to start all over again. Nice, yeah, so they are forced back. Leaf also going down as well as, and really the, the intention there was to get a couple of bubble rotations for Hardest, make sure they has that sufficient energy coming into the fight, but they're not able to make their way in. The Eternal Academy split very well and they isolate targets. And you know what, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with Super Blue. Super Blue is a, a pretty damn good run. He's been hitting some uh, pretty nutty fire strike snipes all day. What do you expect from a season two champion on Evil Gaming last last year? Blank, he's an incredible one. Chow oh my! Coming in with the hungry, hungry diva. Hardest gonna be denied that first grab of the series. Kenzie still has his in his pocket. Gonna be able to drop that one down. Keep Mouse out in the corner. Shatter to try and count it. Finds no one. Chow with the double onto Hardest and Dredro. Eternal Academy opening it back up. And map two, they're carrying in some momentum as Kenzie picks up the double on the retreat. You should really just be able to run at Eternal Academy here because you're, you're, what you're lacking is, is you're lacking the Zenyatta. So Malzasa's shield shouldn't really be affected whatsoever. They don't have Elo, they don't have to put that Discord on. They're not getting advantage of 30% extra damage. So really, Super Blue should be under immense pressure. 
He's waiting for the Nano Cruise, puts it in there, lets him go right into the side of Morningstar. Kluke <laughs> goes and just Look knocks at the huge off the tin can. And L1 from Morningstars is going to get that healing as Chow's going to clean through them. Beautiful set play there by Eternal Academy. Yeah, good read from you there, Tred as well. As I, I saw it in action. Out comes the Nano Boost, and they just run at them with the amp advantage that Askoff provides. And I really do like Askoff. I think he's one of the players that stands out to me on this team. I mean, he was a little bit drowned on HSL. You didn't get to see him shine too much. But now here on a roster that's uh, on, a ca on an academy team, I think he's playing extremely well. One minute remaining for Morning Stars. Dragonetti does have the self destruct, but it's nothing against what Eternal Academy have. Try to get five ultimates online. Kenzie now has that grab. Zeal's about to have the rally. Dragonetti gonna eat up Kenzie's ultimate. There we go. So one for one on the eat. Now it opens it up potentially for Hardest to get his one in, but Askov's gonna take him out after the grab was the nice. Charge comes in. Dragonetti fights free off the back of a charge to cancel out the shield. Morning Stars might have found their way into this matchup and. Looks like they're going to be able to get away with capturing point A. That was a banger of a charge there towards the end. I mean, we have seen a lot of Rhines uh, kind of not do this combination correctly. Uh, almost missed time it, but Mao Zassa, with all that experience in his pocket, he, he gets it down to a T. Gets the timing just right on that one. Shuts down the shield from Pluk and finds an avenue of success for Morningstar to come back into this game. Capturing point A, not a lot of time back remaining though, Blank. Two minutes 30 is about to hit the mark, so any advantage they've got is basically whittled down to the bare minimum to get through point B. And the Eternal Academy have identified that holding up very close to the Bubble's trellis. Gone. Want to contest it. Shadow available, but they have to fall back from the self-destruct from Xiao. Buying more time for Morningstars to get set up. Or buying more time for Eternal Academy to get set up as Malzasa still hitting on that Earth Shadow, waiting for the right time. Wants to probably put this through the payload, maybe get away with some deception, but let's get past Blue. Beautiful Shadow finding multiple members. Counter Shadow did come out from Super Blue, I believe, but wasn't able to get much out of that one. Transcendence will keep Morning Stars alive and enough time to take out Super Pluke. Tardis will keep the fight off going. Malzasa again with a kill onto Kenzie. Eternal Academy. Strong point A defense, but now the ball's in Morningstar's court, and they're not ready to give it up. And what we can see from that fight is now Super Pluke is finally being pressured a lot more. His shield is going extremely low. It's great from Morningstars that they identified this, and Malzasa is not letting it up. I like the self-destruct coming out from Chow towards the beginning there, allowing, like you said, Malzasa, um, sorry, Super Blue to get back a little bit, mm -hmm. receive that healing. Now, it looks like Eternal Academy flipping the map, but they've had to use resources to get here. Have to use resources on Super Blue to keep him back in the fight. There's the Graviton. There might be no bubbles. Self-destruct over the top. Two ah. members to be found by Dragon Eddie, and like you said, Plank, the bubbles weren't there to make it happen for Eternal Academy. Big boots gonna send two flying down the hole. It's Chow and Zeal going for a bit of a dip in the moat of Eichenwalder. Yeah, I can't imagine it's too fun down there either, to be honest with you. It's maybe a bit of a long drop. Could we see it be quite Disney and have some alligators in there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's Disney or not. I mean, do we do not show the, the alligators afterwards? But we do have a fight on our hands almost immediately. Super Brute taking down x -Raf. This is how they've begun that first fight, the retaliation on point A with the Nana Boost. And it looks like Morning Stars, they'll just be backing off for the time being. Hardest is going to go for a reset. Did get isolated from the rest of his team. Doesn't want to give over any extra old no. stars. He knows Morning Stars going back to score in any way. Eternal Academy sitting on three ultimates. Shatter, Sound Barrier, and the Self-Destruct Morning Stars have a little bit of an advantage because they've got the fourth there. They've got that Transcendence available as well. So now Askoff does have this Sound Barrier. It's an ultimate that allows you to split up a little bit more. What's he but doing? he's waiting. What's he's he probably going to go for the boop on oh, Malzasa. No, but he's been found out. Leaf just goes in there with the stun. Just going to go, no, get away. Get Stop out of that it. hole. <laughs> Stop your shenanigans. A super fluke and the rest of Eternal Academy gonna fall around the corner. A lot, a lot of ultimates. ultimates on the board. Rally's being popped. Graviton Surge gonna be pulling Morning Stars together. Transcendence is there. Counter Grab comes out just in time. Not like it. Struck, finding no one. Malzasa hits the shadow and Pluke and multiple members will fall down. Opens it up. Malzasa and Leaf getting the kills. Ciao. Gonna get demacked here. This is another one fight for Morning Stars. I do like it. Uh, Morning Stars, they understood that they depleted all of the ultimates on the side of Eternal Academy. So they don't go for the usual pin choice of the Brigitte. Instead, they go for Askov and try to maximize the amount of ultimate charges they can get there without that amp. Eternal Academy, they're going nowhere. Well, Eternal Academy, they are, you're right, Blank. They are going nowhere, Morning Stars. They're trying to end this map. Well, where did that, where that self destruct come from? Zeal. Getting the shield out on the bubble to protect himself. Sam Barra as well from Eternal Academy. Gonna be holding around this payload. Malzasa 
And the rest of Morning Stars so close to finishing. Eichenbach gonna throw that shadow Mom's down, Asa. finding no one. He's Unfortunately, insane. and Malzasa gets a shadow attempt of his own. That's it. Drops it on top of Zeal and Chow. They didn't get grabbed up. They got nowhere to move. Morning Stars gonna walk this one in. They quickly. can just clear away the baby diva and Askov transcendence on top of the grab. There's no contest from Eternal Academy. Morning Stars are gonna complete. I was going to say there might be an overinvestment of the grab into the shadow as well as, but the more I think about it, I think towards the end there, it's, it's very viable because the spawns are so close mm -hmm. to the payload. So you want to finish the entirety of the team off as quick as possible so they don't get that um, stall out, so to speak. But like you're saying just there, you're pointing at the screen, 18 seconds remaining, so there will be a second round should Eternal Academy make it all the way to point C. Wasn't one of those overtime jobs where we get denied <laughs> that second attempt. It's a long job as well. <laughs> yeah, we might be in for the long haul here. If we could base the performance of Eternal Academy's point A hold, if that was a consistent level of play, then mm -hmm. that could be a different story on Eichenwald. I wonder what they're able to pull out here on the offense, because if that's just a sheer dominant performance on the point A specifically, surely they would know how to capture point A as well. You'd like to think they would. Yeah, y you would. And I, and I think this is something that Morningstars will do pretty well. I think Dredro's getting to the mindset that, you know what, it needs to be a little bit more aggressive versus Eternal Academy. Uh, and I think that definitely shows coming through point B and point C. A lot of times Superfluke was under such a, a harsh amounts of pressure, like he was deep in the ocean. So this is exactly what Morningstars need to do. I, I'm glad they've identified that now. Eternal Academy, they're showing something, but they are in spawn, so we're not sure if that's going to be the thing that they roll out with. The Morning Stars, very, very classic. The Zen Yatta on side to break the shield as they try to go for the rotation. But it looks like Eternal Academy, they're going for something a little bit spicy, a little bit different. Might want to go for something different. One thing I want to point out on Morning Stars is they want to go for this traditional composition. Uh, Leaf has been being dying a l very early in a lot of these fights. Yes. Coming in here is uh, maybe a little bit too aggressive, and that might be something that Eternal Academy have identified that they can exploit. So they move on to a more damage-orientated comp. Zeal going back onto that bar. He had such a great showing on that on Oasis. Yes, this is all about creating crossfires here, and Morningstars immediately understand this, and they retreat into Mini, where they know that they can stay away from that fire coming down from Zeal. Luke's just keeping him off the point. He's solo capping. Buying more time oh, by just moving tick. him away. He won't <laughs> let them get on there. Exo Wrath taking out Chow. So they have lost one member. Gets a free tick and 50% of charge on the more. map. And Eternal Academy going to take it a little bit slower. Kenzie's got a sight line here. Wants to break through that shield and potentially start dealing some actual damage to Morning Stars. And Ooh. nice little dink on Mouse Asa will do just that. Yeah, it's a similar tactic that you would use on Volsky, where you hide in Mega. Instead, it's more orientated around Mini. So Exo Wrath is fairly safe in there for the time being. So, Kenzie, going to be picked off by Hardest. Um, and not sure Luke that's how the interaction works. went for the... Well, he went to go get some more progress on that point, but he was smart enough to move away when it started to look a little bit sour for him. Still moving towards the barrage, and really what Eternal Academy, I think they're looking for here, is the EMP barrage combo, but Chow having a lot of difficulty building up towards it. Yeah, he keeps trying to uh, be a little bit of annoyance to Exoraph, but Exoraph swats him away just like a fly, pretty nice and quick. But there, he is taken down, no transcendence, the EMP is very free, and more so, so is the barrage. Barrage in the pocket for Zeal, gonna commit it to try and take him. down the Lucio. Too he early! Just, just where is he going with that one, Zeal? Like I said, Trigger happy on that barrage. Astoft will bring Tri-Spear back into the fight, and he's going to go hunting for Brigitte. He still has a shield available. Going to be able to get inside the cover. A little bit of an application of speed for Dredro to move him in, and two minutes remaining. Eternal Academy only got that third. Plutes to the power driver onto the point and immediately get out of there. Doesn't want to commit to the fight. Going to ground some aerial units. Wonderful. The duo of Zeal and Askoff taken out by that self-destruct from Dragon Eddie. 1 minute 48 on the clock, and Eternal Academy, they had that combo, they used it out of sync, Zeal pulling that trigger too early. You're going to have to wait for him to get another one before they can go for that set piece. And that's the experience from Dragon Eddie there, showing through. You saw him Overwatch World Cup playing for Italy there, and he, he is very good because he identified the exact moment at Askoff, went for the Guardian Angel, then he throws in the self-destruct. There's no escape from him at that point, and he just goes for <laughs> Tree Drop. Tree Drop's playing the gatekeeper. gatekeeper. Yeah, he's yeah. playing gatekeeper with Chow. <laughs> he knows Chow wants to come from the back line. He's just moving around to try and get that proximity detection. The hat comes off. He's not going to be able to hip hop it away. No South speed either. into position. He wants to drop the EMP. Five members hit. Sound Barrier coming in, actually, make that four. Tree drops that Sound Barrier afterwards. 
Malzass has already been taken out. Point control going over to Fluke. Needs to clear off Leaf. Where's the rest of Eternal Academy? Where are they fighting right now? They're not on the point. They're off to the side trying Dragon to deal Eddie damage. Dragon Eddie goes down low. We'll get demeked. Leaf. Tries me's gonna take him out. Barrage from Zeal. Point blank range. Takes out hardest. And Dragon Eddie on the back end of it. Pluke is gonna knock Malzasa back into the small, tiny mini room. That's gonna be a capture from Eternal Academy, but we're playing around with similar time banks here, Blank. We are indeed. So they did take it down quite low there. It's not quite two minutes 48, but it is three minutes. So we have similar types of performances. But again, I wanna bring this back to the beginning of our broadcast. We didn't expect this kind of stuff. Eternal Academy playing extremely well. My boy Vaskoft is obviously playing wingman to Zeal. Kenzie gets the DMAC. Nice Why little charge up shot, I imagine, from range. And trying to get the sight line on Morningstars. You want to mount this defense. He's playing very far away from his team, but Morningstars aren't showing themselves any sight lines. Earth Shadow committed by Malzasser. And Morningstars might be able to take back control of the point, but they can't clear out the skies. Zeal picking up a kill from Leaf and moving backwards, wants to regroup with the team. Tries to be getting the res. By Askov to bring back into the fight. Morning Stars take control of the payload right by the trust gate. Yeah, Xerath is pretty pretty stuck at the moment. He's gonna be an escorted away by Dredro for the time being. Pile driver thrown in now. We go in there. Zeal picking up a kill onto Dredro. You're gonna see Super Fluke rolling away and it's a bit weird by Eternal hardest. Academy. They're able to move themselves to the defensive position rather than the offensive there one. He goes. Life is gonna move over. Nice reposition from Kenzie, will help find the kill. Trispear picks up the frag. Leah Zeal's gonna be brought back by Askoff. So, yeah, that's self-destruct from Trispear in a confined space. Sorry, Dragon Eddie's gonna take out Trispear, Zeal, and Kenzie. See fragging out still. Morningstar's able to get the payload back in motion. No, it's Eternal Academy getting the payload back in motion. I'm just tripping over everything today. 120 though, Trid. Yeah. For that first corner only. I think Morningstar has played that perfectly from within Castle, denying some of the sight lines that you saw that Kenzie was most obviously going for. And Hardest, he's popping off so far, finding those kills. That was a good concussion uh, rocket attempt. Didn't go for it though. Trujo, gonna get nice up for close and personal with Kenzie, give him the Reddit Lucio experience of diving onto the Widowmaker. Barrage committed again and doesn't find anything. Zeal is so hit and miss with these ultimates, baby. Hardest able to clear him out of the sky. I think that's the second time he's done it this game and I'm not sure how he did it the first time. Dragon Eddie getting the melee kill onto Askoft and Morning Stars. They will stop him with one minute remaining. Still need to get checkpoint B to have any hope of contesting Eichenwald even further because Morning Stars. Might be able to equalize this map going into the half. Eternal, they know they have to switch now. They're not getting the benefits out of this composition that they thought they would. They're really only finding singular sightlines. And it's such a, a really, really good play from Leaf there. He's been quite aggressive the entire time. And he just stares Zeal in the eye. The barrage goes <laughs> off, immediately pops around and gives him the speed boost and walks into and underneath Castle. <laughs> you can't get him in there. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Zeal. Exoraph. Has a transcendence available. Both support ultimates online for Morning Stars and Eternal Academy walking this is one nice EMP. Will find four. Malzasa will find a grave to rest in for a bit. Exorap comes in afterwards. Both supports actually avoided that EMP and are able to come in with the transcendence. And now the sound barrier. Hardest got an additional hack on top of him as well. They just saying no fun allowed for you today. Leafs there to take out Zeal. Askoff staying alive. He's gonna be booping himself back up. Wall riding into the point. Leaf's gonna be pinned against the corner. They will then take out Trispear with the sound wave. Are they gonna do it? Self over the oh, top of Dragon Eddie, it. and Pluke is gone. So has Chow. Morning Stars clutch out the defense. They're denying Askoft any touch. That's gonna be Morning Stars equalizing the series. <laughs> What a boot from Dredo towards the end there. Super Pluke was a mid Earth Shatter animation towards the end. It was like hammer to the ground. Oh, it's the river. <laughs> well, I mean, that hammer is going to hit that water with some force. Probably going to cause a tsunami somewhere at some point down the line. <laughs> There's that the new map. It's just like, it's just a drowned village. Yeah, it could potentially be that blank, but... Let's have a look at some highlights as we uh, chat about the half so far. Fantastic opening from Eternal Academy. Absolutely. Able to make sure that they make their presence known in European contenders. Particularly liked the option of bringing KSP into this map in particular to get him some playtime, but also show off his DPS skills here. His Ash, very oppressive in tandem with Leaf when they were able to abuse the high ground on City Center. Oh, yeah, and it's, we're at 1 1 right now, Tread. Mm -hmm. This is the closest game yet. <laughs>
Yes, it is, because <laughs> every other game has been a 4-0 scoreline, and we're now finally going to have an equal halftime, leaving the stakes open a little bit longer. Dragon Eddie, of course, got an E. That's not to deter what happened on the side for Chow. He also got in there with a couple of consumptions, but the bombs from Dragon Eddie, I think, have just been outperforming yeah, Chow yeah, altogether. Absolutely. I think that Chow, you've seen a lot of these um, great combinations with the Graviton, but Vanilla self-destructs wise, yeah, you're completely correct. Dragonetti has been throwing them out mid-fight. They've been going over the top, displacing targets. You saw just at the end there, whilst they were, whilst you did see Eternal Academy trying to push it all the way through point B, right at the last moment. That self-destruct splits them all up, splits all their attention up, and it's very easy for someone like Drijo to go for the mega boop. Just wants to go in there, reposition him into the LOS of that self-destruct. And Dragon Eddie has shown he's not afraid to even start fights no, with them at the end no. of Iconvolve. But <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll kick things off on Volskaya. <laughs> 